Welcome to Radically Loved Radio. I wanted to create a place where people can go to to get inspired, get motivated, or find some clarity and get tools to create a radically loved life. I will do my best to provide information on a variety of subjects, including yoga, holistic health, life coaching, spirituality, meditation, and overall mindful living. Each episode will bring you some of the world's best spiritual leaders, entrepreneurs, yoga teachers, coaches, along with some of my closest friends, and we will talk about their life experiences and journeys to create something more out of their lives and how they continue to grow to make that happen. Thanks for listening. Going on my very first yoga retreat seven years ago was a major turning point in my life, so much so that now I get to lead these amazing yoga adventures all over the world. These are truly transformative experiences, and I believe that anyone who enjoys a lifestyle of health and wellness can greatly benefit from a yoga retreat. So, this February, I'm taking a very special group with me on a yoga and meditation retreat to Thailand. The retreat is called Love, Gratitude, and Freedom. The retreat is about designing a roadmap to connect to love in your life. We will use different yoga modalities to connect with our sense of purpose, gratitude, and achieve more freedom in our lives. Everyone knows how during our daily lives we get totally bombarded and totally overwhelmed and it's really nice to be able to get away, go somewhere with like-minded individuals, eat really delicious food, and be able to just immerse ourselves in practice. You'll take your yoga to the next level, you'll get a new perspective, you'll be able to have a digital detox, you'll be able to relax and de-stress, and maybe learn something new. If you're interested, go to www.radicallyloved.com forward slash events, read all about the retreats there, or you can email me, rosie at radicallyloved.com for more information. Candace Hutzbeth is a lifelong fitness enthusiast with a passion for inspiring women to wholeheartedly pursue their best self in the gym and in the office. She joined the bodybuilding.com executive leadership team to align her passion for helping others achieve their health and fitness goals with her more than 15 years of digital marketing strategy expertise. In 2015, Candace was recognized as one of the top 50 influential women in digital marketing. She was also highlighted in 2012 as one of the top 25 women who rock social media via top rank. She is one of the most inspiring women I know and is consistently, consistently showing us all how to show up in our own goals for health and wellness. I am so excited to have had a chance to speak with her. She is such an incredible woman, and I really, really, really am so inspired by her and her story, and I hope that you all enjoy it and are all as equally inspired by her and her efforts as I am. I'm just really excited to have such a warrior goddess on the podcast because you're awesome and incredible and you're amazing and I need the world to know how incredible and amazing you are oh my goodness I'm (laughs) I'm blushing like a whole lot of blushing is happening over here but thank you very much (laughs) so I want to talk to you well I want to talk to you about everything but uh, I know that there was a couple of topics that you wanted to talk about that I thought were really really great and really important um and for the number one thing for, for people that maybe uh, the two people living under a rock that don't know who you are, um, maybe tell us a little bit about your background, your story, and uh, what your current role is. Sure. Gosh, I'm sure there are hundreds of thousands of people that listen to your podcast that will know about me. But <laughs> <laughs> I am, gosh, I feel like I'm, I've had... Um, the most amazing journey professionally and with my passion for fitness um, that's really, gosh, been over the last 18 years. So I started uh, competing in fitness at a very young age, uh, about 17 years old, and was, like, lucky to find the sport just through my passion for coaching cheerleading and gymnastics, and I started personal training toward my um, back end of high school, early end of college, and just fell into um, the world of fitness competitions. And truly, truly fell in love with it. Um, A few years into college, which I originally studied kinesiology and um, exercise science and thought I would be a trainer or a coach of some sorts for my career, uh, I realized that I kind of wanted a different 
or I thought I wanted a different um, socioeconomic status and kind of shifted gears toward a more of a business focus and ended up switching my undergrad to business, finished my MBA, moved to New York after a few years of working after, um, after school, and my career just kind of went crazy. I spent 10 year, years in New York um, working in the advertising world oh. on some of the biggest brands that, um, that exist today, IBM, Intel, Coca-Cola, Nokia, you name it. I probably have touched it at some point in my career. Oh. Um, and then I spent a lot of time really building um, different digital practices and competencies within the agencies to better service those brands um, for about 10 years in New York. And I woke up one day and I thought, I am so close to what I had thought would be my ultimate career kind of destination, and I really am not that happy with my life every single day, and, uh, and I don't feel as good as I felt when I was spending time uh, more physically active during the day or having more of an impact on others' physical activity during the day, and so I, I thought now is probably the time for me to really put emphasis on blending my passion and my profession and bringing those two worlds together. And I'm kind of there today professionally, which is awesome. So about two and a half years ago, I, um, I got a phone call from bodybuilding.com. Actually, at the same time, I was speaking with another brand in the fitness space and had to kind of pick between the two brands. And I ended up here in Boise, Idaho, all the way from New York City. Um, and I am currently, well, I'm in transition currently, but I was the VP of marketing here at bodybuilding.com for the last two and a half years. And for the last six months, I've kind of been performing a few jobs. Um, One of them is launching a very new and exciting company um, and brand called Nourish and Bloom. So I'm the founder of Nourish and Bloom. I'm also the chief marketing officer of a company called Verity Brands that we are building, which will launch several sports nutrition brands in the next couple of years. And I will always have a heart for bodybuilding.com. Oh, you're like the ultimate female entrepreneur. <laughs> like that is, so, <laughs> that is a, such an incredible uh, resume, Candice. That's awesome. Thank you. It's been, it's been, like I said, it's been such a blessing. Like my, I feel like I got to spend 12 years really honing my professional competencies and craft. Yeah. And my whole life I've had this amazing passion for fitness. So when I was at the point in life where I could bring those two things together, it was just like the perfect scenario. How, I mean, that's, I really want to kind of dive deep into that sort of that process for you. um, Because I think it's important to be able to, to get, (laughs) Candace, hold on one second. My dog is going nuts right now. <laughs> Normally, I don't have him in here with me, but he literally is like possessed. I don't know if you can hear him. Do you hear that sound? What's his name? His name's Chewy. Uh, he's literally, Chewy. he's just going nuts right now. So I'm, I'm going to just give me one second. I got to get him out of here or he's just going to drive me nuts. <laughs> um, okay. All right. I have a I have a puppy as well. Her name's Miley, and so I know how you feel. It's like that mom life. What kind of dog is she? She's a miniature dachshund. She's just the love of my life. Oh my god! Being a dog mom is literally like the most amazing role on this planet. I agree. <laughs> like being a dog. I feel like I'm in the office. I have gosh, um, well, indirectly here about you know 400 um, staff members that I feel like are my kids, but. Um, directly, you know, on the BDCom marketing side, about 65, 70 that I felt like were my kids in my work life. And then I got to go home to my being a dog mom. Yeah, exactly. No, I totally get that. That's so cool. Um, so one of the things that you mentioned, and it's kind of like a big theme with the people that I've had as guests on the podcast and, and just people in my life in general that I really look up to uh, it, this whole the transition from doing something that you thought you loved to doing what you really love. You know what I mean? Like that sort of like transition in your life. So, you know, being, having had the experience of moving to New York and having the experience of working for a big agency and having sort of like the norm job, right. To, to transitioning to doing something that you maybe were a little bit more passionate about, How did that happen and how did you know that you wanted to change what, as you said, was almost like the dream world or your dream life? 
yeah, gosh, it's tough. And I don't know if it's right for everyone. Mm. I think, you know, some people can really separate um, their work from their hobby um, or profession from passion, and they're satisfied with that. Um, And then some people really love that full immersion into both, and then you have no separation in your life because all, all that you do is embodying your passion every single day, and so then you're always working um, and then some people have mixed emotions about that because then do you ever have a break and do you ever feel refreshed? And I, I think it's a, it's a battle and you have to, you have to pick your poison, right? And for me, I, I tried to keep them separate and have, and this is my career over here on one side and then this is my hobby on the other side. And I just found that I was never able to make enough time for my hobby to make me truly happy um, and I'm, I'm a pretty um, type A, like, all-in kind of person. So it's tough for me to go all-in and um, into two areas that were completely diversified. And so I felt like when I blended them together, I was able to every day give 100% of my time and my energy and my mental capacity and my heart into what I love, which became my career. And so I feel like, for me, that was, that's a very fulfilling day for me to live out, um, but not everyone wants to do that. Yeah, I mean, that's totally... Or should. Or should, exactly. Uh, the transition from moving uh, from New York to Boise, Idaho, what was that like for you? <laughs> um, <laughs> I love you the know, little so laugh. Originally... <laughs> I know. It, it was, a first, I was like, well, what happens in Idaho? I, I thought potatoes, but actually we have a lot more corn farms than we do potatoes in I guess that's a little bit further north um, than where we are here. But, yeah, I had no clue what to expect in terms of um, lifestyle and culture and um, weather. And, you know, it's still it's a very small town, um, especially when you're comparing it to a big city. I came from – I was born in Southern California, grew up in La Jolla and Coronado. I lived in Phoenix and Scottsdale, Arizona for quite some time, and then, like I said, 10 years in New York. So I always explain myself as kind of the best of both coasts. Um, I always say, think I have, like, uh, very much of an East Coast mindset, professionally, that East Coast hustle, but a West Coast um, a West Coast vibe in terms of being a little bit more chill um, and open-minded and loving and a little bit more earthy. So I think <laughs> both of those, um, those things kind of come together here for me in Boise, and that's nice. Um, I did have to slow my roll a little bit, you know? It's yeah. a little slower. <laughs> well, and how is that like for somebody that, I mean, because you, you do so much even now, Candace, like, I don't know that people know how hard, I mean, I just, I follow you on Instagram, obviously, and I'm constantly being inspired and like everything that you post is so inspirational. And I'm always like, I got to go to the gym. I got to go work out. And it's just, but you're so committed and so in it, like, you know, so, so how do you maintain that momentum when you're in a transition like that? I feel like I was able to more, like more step, step into my stride more confidently than I ever um, was able to in New York. Like oh. again, because I was having to like separate my or compartmentalize my time and energy. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely still make time for my workouts there. I've always been a morning workout person just because, you know, when you, um, get to a certain place in your career, there's just no way around being ready um, to start the workday early and being in the office early. Um, and so for me, if I wanted to get my work out in, it, it has always been like a 4.30 or a 5 a.m. Oh. time commitment. And so I've just accepted that reality in my life and forced myself to be a morning person. But, um, f- but post, you know, 7.30 a.m., 8 o'clock in the morning, my time and energy is about everyone else in my life, um, pr- primarily everyone else in my professional life. And, and so, I, you know, in New York, that, that goes all day and sometimes into the late hours of the evening, early into the next morning, right? You're, sometimes there were nights where we would sleep at the office if we were doing a new business pitch or something. So you just really don't have the time to dedicate to both areas, whereas now here my life being about fitness, me being surrounded by fitness and people who – um, are champions of a healthy lifestyle. I'm I'm just able to to live that all day long, even yeah. when I'm working, which is nice. Yeah. Well, tell me how Nourish and Bloom was founded. Tell me what was the idea behind that, and what how did how did you even come up with it? Like, how was Nourish and Bloom even born? Yeah. So it's been um, so two and a half years. I, I came into Bodybuilding.com and. 
I think most people know that com is a bit of that bro life lifting culture. Mm-hmm. And it definitely is. And um and I will love and always be grateful for all of the all of the, the awesome guys that we have here that are about heavy lifting and training hard and that lifestyle. Um, over the last couple of years, we've done a lot on the main site on bodybuilding.com for women in terms of supporting women with content and education in their journey um, through fitness. And we've, we've been able to do a lot. Actually, this year, um, we launched a women's channel specifically on bodybuilding.com that was just a destination on the site for women uh, with content written by women and um, passionately happy to bring that to life, and then also on the store side, because we are um, a supplement store, we've launched a separate women's store as well. So I, I really, when I got here, wanted to do more for women, um, selfishly, but also just females um, are so amazing and they deserve a space <laughs> that represents them. Yes. Um, but also, in my mind, you know, most of the women um, that are Bodybuilding.com customers are probably doing the shopping for not only themselves, but for the men in their lives. Um, That's just, you know, normal consumer behavior. So we wanted to do more. We did more for women on bodybuilding.com, and that was awesome. But it's still speaking and connecting with a very specific type of woman, and it's a woman where, um, you know, fitness really is the center of her life. Mm -hmm. And all the decisions she's making throughout the day are around her training and her nutrition. Um, And as either that, that very same woman evolves in her life or... Um, as, as other women enter fitness and it's not, their life isn't centered around fitness, but fitness is an element of their life, we wanted to be able to better service those women. And so I got get together with a core team here and just started brainstorming a lot of ideas. Originally, we thought we would create kind of a counterpart in the wellness space to bodybuilding.com that would be much more editorial driven and um, just really felt passionately about bringing to market um, a simplified system for women that was content and um, product that, that could make her life her life easier. And so Nourish and Bloom was born. We have an amazing um, group of experts that the, will actually, the brand will be launching in early February. So you'll get to see that when you visit the website, hopefully. Yes. Um, Rosie, uh, you happen to be one of our amazing Yay! experts and we are so honored to have you. <laughs> um, but... But five amazing women um, that range from PhDs, um, fitness experts, yoga instructors, meditation gurus, um, nutritionists, and us women got together and sat around the table, and we, we first thought out what are the, um, the most critical factors for, if we were going to create a line for ourselves, what would we want? And so we started with product efficacy and purity as the number one focus. And so making sure that whatever we did create was whole food based whenever possible, was mm-hmm. free from all the bad stuff and only full of the good stuff. So no GMOs, no soy, no gluten, um, no artificial sweeteners and fillers, just pure product that was good. And we started there. And then uh, when we cracked the code on what our product line would be, we knew we needed to get to work on all of the content that would support on this lifestyle, because we know this lifestyle, because we know the supplements are a great piece um, of the puzzle, but they are just um, just a piece of the puzzle. And getting the the education down, getting the the support system down, and the mindset down for women is is even more important than that. So we will be launching in February with our full e-commerce site, all of our products, and our N and D Life app, which is really I think the foundation of the whole brand um, offering education across a broad spectrum of all things wellness. Yeah, that's, I mean, I obviously selfishly am so excited because I, I'm a part of it. And I think that what you have created is something so incredible and something really needed right now. And especially, you know, having that focus at coming from a holistic approach, right? So you have all these different modalities that really speak to women in every stages of life, right? So I, I really, I'm so excited and I, I can't wait to, to see it come to, to fruition. So one of the things that I, I kind of want to just talk a little bit more about in, in regard to Nourish and Bloom and how it came about, you know, in, in, the intention behind it and the focus on creating a, a healthier lifestyle. And this is so much part of a part of you and what you do for a living. You know, you're, you're totally immersed in the health and wellness realm. 
And, and I want to hear from you, why, why is it so important for women now, today, to focus this much on health, fitness, self-care, and our own self-development? Yeah, gosh, that's like such a big question, right? And it's so <laughs> personal um, to every woman who's going to answer that question. But I think as a whole, right, if you are free from illness or any kind of health impediment, um, you feel good, you feel strong, your body is able to do all the things you want it to do, and you've combined that with um, really positive emotional and spiritual outlook, you have like an, a truly active mindset, meaning you like embrace the work capacity that goes into achieving what you want to achieve, like, man, that's like, you're limitless when you get there. And I think that's what we want for women, uh, especially with Nourish and Bloom, is we want them to feel limitless. Um, mm -hmm. And we want to give them the tools to get there. I think also, like, people, wellness is, like, wellness is the, the trending word in fitness, right? And it's, it is all-encompassing of, you know, mind, body, and spirit. Um, and it's less fitness-focused, which I think we've been in a fitness craze for quite some time, and not yeah. that that's ending, but that I think it's shifted a little bit more towards wellness and, and mental health and perspective. I and mean, I know you talk a lot on, on your podcast about being present mm -hmm. and um, the importance of that. And so I think people, um, they're hungry for how to, how to achieve that, how to, what, what the path is to get to a place where they feel like they are, their physical fitness is in balance with their mental health. Mm -hmm. And um, there aren't a lot of, there aren't a lot of tools out there for, for women to achieve that. Um, in terms of uh, content for them to consume and understand it. I mean, I think there are all, there's a lot of mass influence, right? There's the scale of social media. There's mm -hmm. um, these people that you come across in your, in your daily life and you admire for some um, certain element of maybe their approach to wellness and you learn and grow from them, but there isn't that toolkit that's out there. Mm -hmm. And then at the same breath, that, that path seems overwhelming. And so I think what we've tried to do is, create a, a easily digestible, lightweight daily actions that you can take to improve your life today, right? Not Because I think what happens, and we're getting ready to hit January, right? So we know that New Year's resolutions are going to go crazy. Yeah. yeah, and even right now, right? I mean, we're, we're like right before the Christmas holiday, and the things that happen between now and the new year, people tend to put off their personal goals um, until the new year. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I've, I've always hated that mindset and I hate the strong word, but I've always really disliked that mindset yeah. because when you are truly self-aware and honest in that self-awareness, you know, like the things that I am doing right now are taking me further away from the goals that I have, or they're bringing me closer. There's no staying still. And if I know that I am taking actions today that are pushing me further away from my goals, I'm either, like, not being honest with myself that I'm aware that that's happening or I'm choosing not to care or I'm subconsciously putting it off toward a start date. And it's like, why would I do that? Why would I waste today? Why would I waste next week? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd rather us get to a place where we are starting now with the next meal that I'm going to have, with the next glass of water that I'm going to drink because we know we need to drink more and the next workout that I'm going to have mm -hmm. instead of putting it off and Yes, this brand and system will be launching into the new year, but I, I really hope that we can make this a 365 lifestyle choice. Yeah. Why do you think that people put it off like that? Like, why do you think that fitness or health or, or these modalities, they fall on the back burner or people kind of just put them off or they say, oh, well, I'll wait until the first or I'm going to wait until the beginning of spring or wait till b right before summer or, you know, why, why, do, why do you think we do that? Hmm. Well, it's hard. I mean, anything that's hard, you have to really want. Um, I, I also think we, we let ourselves get, ourselves get distracted. I mean, mm -hmm. gosh, there are so many things that happen every day, um, all week long that we just can't control. And we let ourselves like mentally fixate on those things or, um, let those things become triggers that throw us off track instead of just really centralizing our thoughts on, well, what are the things that I can control? 
what actions can I take today, right now, that are going to progress me in a positive path um, and really just focus on doing those things. And, and sometimes that's like hard work that people have to go through to get there and understand that. Sometimes it's a lack of self-awareness, but most of the time it's distraction. Um, yeah, and I think there's a lot of things in the world that can distract us. And scrolling through social media and uh. taking on like more mindless triggers can distract us, but if we can block that out and just focus on the things we can control and the things we can do, I think everyone would be much happier and obviously much closer to their goals, but easier said than done. <laughs> yeah. But I think that you're, you, you hit it right on the nose by saying what you're saying. It's like the, the, all the, there's so many distractions for us to get swept away by the wonders or the mystical land of social media. And, and for me, using social media is something so intentional. And I know that it is for you too, because everything you that you post is very intentional you know and and i find that to be extremely motivating and in, extremely inspirational and and i find that for you know younger women that utilize social media as a, as a means to communicate uh or to get inspired or to find fit motivation etc um i think that it can be used as a tool for light, but it could also be a very insidious place to allow yourself to get into, uh, as far as, uh, fitness stereotypes. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I do. I think for, for me, like I've always, um, it's kind of been a, a, a twofold thought process for social media for me. Yeah. One is like, yeah, I genuinely love seeing other people, inspiring other people to accomplish things they didn't think they were accomplished or break past maybe goals that they put on themselves or um, barriers that they put on themselves. Um, I genuinely love that, but it's also my own sense of accountability, right? So, and I, and through my, and I've always believed that in leadership, like I want to be every day the kind of leader who leads through action. And so I try to make sure that not only in my work life, but in like anything that I do put out on social media is truly living the lifestyle that I believe is a healthy and, um, an active and inspiring way to live. Um, and then if I'm putting it out there and I'm proving the point in my daily interaction, hopefully people see that if she's doing it, maybe I can do it too. And they start to believe in their own ability, but that it also inspires some kind of questioning or thought, well, Hey, why is she able to get up so early every morning and go to the office and get things done? And, you know, I don't know, be home to feed the dog at night, whatever it is. Yeah. But, um, I, I truly believe in leading through action and, and actions being so much more impactful than words. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree with, with that. And also by, allowing us to take agency within ourselves to accomplish whatever goal we set or whatever our own personal fitness philosophy will be, you know, whatever that is, like to really embody that and, and to take action. You know, that's the thing with when I work with clients uh, on on goals specifically in, in, uh, in fitness or in health, right? Uh, I always say like I can t I can tell you what sort of things to do, what sort of routines to implement into your life, what foods to eat, what foods to take out and how many times a week you need to move your body like and to take out the really intense stress out of your life to meditate. I could give them a list of of items to check off a list, but if if they're not doing it, I'm not going to mm -hmm. do it for them. I do my work. You know what I mean? Like you do your work, yeah. you know, you show up, you're, you're doing you every morning at four or 5 AM. You're waking up to do your work. Like I'm waking up every morning to do my practice, to meditate, to do yoga, to eat right, to cook healthy foods, you know, like I'm doing the work so we can guide people into the right or making the best possible decisions for themselves, but, but they have to be the ones to do it. Right. So this is what I see time and time again, working with people. It's like, how, how 
do we begin to sort of change that? And look, I've been on the opposite end. You know, I've been on the end of like, I know exactly what to do. I got coaches. I've got a teacher. I've got, I've been in, in ruts before where I'm like, I don't care about working out. I don't care about going to yoga. I don't care about sitting on my cushion. Like, I don't want to do any of it. You know what I mean? I'm just like, (laughs) I want to eat ice cream and eat caramel corn and watch Netflix for hours a day, you know? (laughs) <laughs> but it's like that's the inertia that sets in and to pull out of that is 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 a huge feat sometimes right so it's like but but it's in me yeah. i have to find the inspiration or or find the the light or or be inspired or or just just to do it right it's like the rewiring of of the brain so for you have you ever experienced that number 1 and two if you have how have you pulled out of that yeah, gosh, I feel like um, one of the reasons I have, like, this deep love for fitness um, outside of just general health and wellness is because I, I really feel like um, my fitness journey has taught me, like, the most critical factor that I believe um, has made me successful mm. in life. If I am successful in life, it's because of work ethic and discipline. And I think that, you know, with fitness, you're always going to get out what you put in. And at different phases in your journey, different things motivate you, but you always have to put in that system of work. And one, one thing that you said, um, just getting the work done, like a lesson from fitness that I can apply just, just this week. Like I was doing, I think it was Tuesday morning, um, one of my Metcons was, was fairly challenging to get through. And, you know, I'm, I'm learning a lot about myself and my ability to understand how to pace and push through these different Metcons. Um, and obviously CrossFit is like a whole other part of my fitness journey that's taught me a lot about myself. But going in um, to a workout like this, sometimes you have to just chip away at the next exercise without strategizing. You just have to get yourself to not take that five-second break and just start the movement. Mm. but you're forced to start the movement because it is the objective of the workout. It is the benefit you're trying to achieve and you're on the clock, right? So I'm listening to myself, like talk myself through um, just picking up the barbell and completing the first clean uh, before I have to get through another nine, before I have to move on to the next 20 toast bars that I have to get through. And it's just about starting, not standing there and staring at it because the more I stand there and stare at it, the more I'm wasting time. But if I step in right away and I get that one, that first rep done, I've started, I've made movement, I've made progress. The clock is still going. It's in my favor. Um, yeah, it's just you, the discipline and, and the fact that you can, um, I, I love that about fitness. I love that it, it teaches me lessons in a workout that I can apply to life the next day, right? I'm going to hit an obstacle in the office. I'm sure it's bound to happen and I'm going to have to push through it. I'm going to have to figure out the next step and I'm just going to have to take it. I'm not going to be able to sit back and wait because if I do, it might mean um, our packaging isn't finalized on time or it doesn't get to the manufacturer to run and we miss our launch date, right? I, it just, you apply these, these lessons that you learn in fitness to life and I think that that's that's one of the great gifts fitness has given me. Uh-huh. Um, so I never really feel like I lose the motivation to put time into my fitness journey because I'm getting so much out of it. Yeah. Now, there are definitely days where I'm like, man, I'm tired today and I just need a day off. Like I really don't take rest days. I don't program them. Um, but every third week or so, I know it's going to hit me and I'm going to need a Sunday evening <laughs> to just chill at home. <laughs> um, and I'll, and I'll take it. But for the most part, I wake up pretty motivated and excited to get into the gym because I know that the work I put in there and the value that comes out of it is going to apply to so many other aspects of my life. Yeah. And I think that that's so beautifully said because it is such a metaphor for life. I mean, it really is. Like everything that you're saying, you're like, I just got to go to the next thing. You can't even overthink it. It just, you have to go through the motions and push through the resistance, right? I mean, that's, that's, Mm -hmm. I mean, that, what a great, I mean, that is life. I mean, that's what we have to do. Like, or we could just not do it. Right. And just 
be <laughs> and then not progress exactly yeah. and just like be a little couch potato and just complain about how nothing ever changes and you're just not doing anything yeah and and I mean I would equate I would equate the complaining like sitting there and like wallowing in my own self pity because something's <laughs> not going my way and choosing to stay home and and do that um, is the equivalent of standing and staring at the barbell while the clock's ticking yeah I'm not getting anywhere and then the clock is still ticking. But if I make that mo- that next step and I take that first rep, um, I'm making progress toward a goal. Um, I'm moving forward, um, and I don't. And you don't waste the energy getting distracted by usually the thing you can't control, which is the thing that's making you want to stay home and wallow in self pity. Ah, yes. Oh, that's so <laughs> that's so <laughs> true. You know, it's like you're just getting your you're literally getting yourself out of the rut, you know, I find that for myself when, when this does happen. And usually it's after an extended period of time where I've not had any days off, you know, because I'm just constantly going, it's like, we're cut from the same cloth, right? We just, we like to create and, and we, we are live, we're living our passion. We get to wake up every morning and do something that we love to do. And so it just makes you want to do it every day, you know? But when, when, you know, I, I personally for myself get to that point where I'm like, I, I can't, I, I can't. And then I really don't do any of it. It's just like I hit the rebel button and I'm like, no, I'm going to Netflix. I'm going to watch this entire show today. I'm not going to do anything. And then like the next day I have like the inertia hangover and I'm like, everything's, it just stuck, right? Every, nothing's moving. And it's, it's like when, when I find that my, my clients or people that I work with experience that I'm like, well, what exactly is your current state right now? Are you sitting down? Are you wallowing in your own self-pity? Are you just Mm -hmm. thinking of all the negative things? Are you letting all the negative speak, take over and take control of your body, of your mind, of everything? Well, get up, like go for a walk. Go think about those things, but go for a walk. Okay, so now maybe you want to go take a class. Go take a class. You know, go take a class. Go move your body, like go somewhere. Just go somewhere. You know, like just that movement will totally just move things around. I mean, one of the things that that I tell my students all the time, right? It's like our our issues are in our tissues, right? And this is something that mm-hmm. that I learned from a teacher uh, of mine that you know studied psychology and and is is a yoga teacher. And we, we did a training for um uh people with trauma and and teaching yoga with people with trauma and and th- this type of thing, you know. So it's so true, you know, all, all of our, all of our resistance, all of our, you know, traumas or anxieties or, or stress, tension, everything gets locked in our body. So when we don't exercise and I think exor- exorcism, you know, like, I'm just like, it's like an exorcism of your body. Like you just have to be able to get all of those things out. I mean, really, that's just where my mind goes. I'm like, it, our bodies need to move, you know? And so when you have the level of dedication and discipline that, that you have, Candace, is like, that is, that is huge, you know? And, and, and I love hearing how dedicated you are and how committed you are to, to this life and, and it being your passion and it being your career and you being able to push through those obstacles and, and achieve everything that you want, you know, solely by taking agency of your body, right? I love that. Yeah. And I think, I mean, there's days, like, there's days where it's, you know, it's easier to get up and, like, throw the workout clothes on and get out the door and, um, and feel peppy about it. And then there's days where I'm like, man, I'm tired. Man, it's cold outside, you know? <laughs> but I try to then reframe my thought. And it's, um, I, I think, you know, obviously another big, another buzzword in the wellness space is just gratitude and just yeah. coming from a place of being grateful, but I truly do feel that when you can reframe, you know, I don't have to go get up right now and go to the gym. I don't have to get up at 4, 3 a.m. I don't have to go out in the snowy, cold, 12-degree weather this morning, but I get to, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm grateful for the fact that I get to do this, and I'm not going to risk um, that opportunity that's been given to me. So I kind of, I've always, I have this quote, and I don't even know wh- where I came across from it. I actually think I came across from it uh, from, like, Rev Run. <laughs> but, um, it's, um, it's, the quote is, um, thankful and blessed. Today I will continue to work and expect the best of my effort. 
And I try to play that quote over in my head again and again when I have those moments where I'm like, oh, it's cold. And it's like, no, I don't have to do that. I get to do this. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for the fact that I get to do it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put in as much work as I can. And I'm going to expect that the return is going to be tenfold. Mm -hmm. And then I'm motivated. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. Tell us another words of wisdom to live by. What's something, what's a quote or some, or a mantra you tell yourself that's something that really inspires you when you're feeling like that? I think, um, not, not that I can like rattle them off the top of my head. I mean, there's a few like, um, that Ogmandino quote about, um, persistence. I think it's just like very simply, I will persist until I succeed. Mm. I mean, all of those quotes around work ethic, I truly, truly believe that, work ethic will always win. Um, you know, I'm a hard work beats talent kind of mindset <laughs> person. And I, so I, most of the things that I will tell myself have to do with re- just reminding myself of that trigger, um, reinstating the fact that that work is going to pay off if I just continue to put it in and stay focused on the things that I know are progressing me forward. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. Who in your life has made the biggest impact as far as allowing you to create the life that you live in now? Oh, gosh. There's so many. You know, you meet so many people along, like, your lifelong journey that have have impact, and I always feel like I never want to leave anyone out. Um, You know, I'll default to, like, my my mom, of course. Um, I think and it's probably for opposite reasons than most would expect. Um, I, you know, my mom had, didn't have, like, the most amazing uh, relationships uh, growing up. You know, she's gone through three marriages. My dad has as well. So I kind of went through that. Not, I didn't have an, an, a hard upbringing by any means, but I went through that, like, broken, divorced family situation mm-hmm. growing up. And I, I saw the, um, the impact that it had. So I, I always looked at the situation my family was in and said, like, I don't want that for my life. I want to be much more in control of my security, my financial health. Um, I want to be a bit more independent to where I'm not, you know, the risk is less um, impacted by someone else where I'm a little bit more in control. So that was, like, definitely a trigger for me in terms of motivation to, build a career that I was proud of one, but also gave me the the lifestyle that I wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would say her, and then she just been obviously my biggest supporter, like no matter what crazy hobby, like right now it is CrossFit and thinking that (laughs) maybe by some odd chance, if I train really hard through next year, I could go to the games as a master's. And my mom's like getting me, my mom like bought me new Ollie Lissers for Christmas because she forced my goals, you know, and so I'm like, I will always love her for that. But I have um, this amazing best friend um, who's been my best friend for 18 years. Her name is Kim Dolan Leto. She's also um, a well-known influencer in the fitness space, um, has a book called um, Fit Faith Inspired Transformation. She has um, been a big influence on my life spiritually as well as um, professionally and emotionally and all the other levels. So I would say those two women are, like, very critical women in my life um, who have pushed me and kept me positive, but there are so many. You know, I find that when I ask this question, I get that a lot, which is so – it's such an incredible thing to hear how – how influential mommies are in the world. It's like everyone always says that, you know, especially women, which I find really fascinating. I I love that. Um, I I will say, like, as a a, maybe, like, a counterintuitive – thought to that um while I was in New York and uh obviously I'm in um advertising I'm working for one of the world's largest largest ad agencies um I'm a young uh very determined female there are not very many um uh, females at the top um uh, well I, I think it's changing now but in yeah. the past in advertising yeah. mm-hmm. the days of mad men it, there were not a lot of right. strong female executives and I think there was this very strange probably like that uh, I'm so I'm 35 10 years older than me, um, women who are 45 plus in the executive rankings of some of these bigger agencies, that, that, um, that era, they did not feel like there was room for more than just a few of them at the top. Mm. So not 
as frequently as you would think, but pretty often I would be hit with kind of these barriers professionally where I would see um, a strong female leader who I would admire and I would seek mentorship or some type of learning relationship from them and I would kind of be given the cold shoulder. Mm. And I think that, like, that experience just made me say, I will never be like that. And there's enough room, I believe, there's enough room for all of us to succeed and there's surely more than two female seats in the executive boardroom yeah. at any agency. Right. I have always had the mindset with the t- my teams, like, I want my team to be smarter than me. I want them to be hungrier than me. If they're not nipping at my heels for my job, then they're probably not the team for me. Like, and I will always embrace their growth oh. and support their growth. And so I think that because I didn't have a lot of strong female support professionally, I've always tried to be that for other women. Yeah. Wow. And that, and I thank you for that because you really embody that Candace. And I think it's so great. And it's, it's so inspiring to have leaders like you in the world doing that because, and and I, I really do feel that now it is changing. I, I do believe that in the past that that was definitely the case, but I also, I, I'm right there with you. I, I believe that there is O oh, plenty for everyone. You know, I'm not big on, on the female competitiveness at all. You know, I just, I'm like everyone, mm-hmm. I, I want everyone to do it. Like everyone deserves a chance. And maybe it's, it's my upbringing too, where it's like there, there is enough, you know, like I was just always, all I wanted was uh, female camaraderie and, you know, the, the sense of, of, I grew up in a matriarchy, you know, my grandmother, my mother, like every, there was strong women and everyone was always so close, you know? So I, I totally believe that as well. I think that there's, there is enough. One of the things that I wanted to ask you was where in your life do you feel the most free? Hmm. You know, I think when I'm teaching, so I um, I coach a class here for the employees at bodybuilding.com mm-hmm. twice a week, and it's just like a body weight conditioning class, and we just get down there in the studio together and like crank the tunes, and I lead us through a workout, and we have so much fun, and I think like in those moments where I am with a group that is enjoying themselves through movement and building confidence and uh, that energy is there, like that is the most amazing free feeling. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. I had no idea that you did that. That's so great. Yeah, I wanted to make sure, like when I moved here, you know, I didn't know anyone. And um, obviously with 500 people in our, in our headquarters office and I'm in meetings all day long, I really don't get to interact with as many of them as I would like. So I started teaching the class just as a way to um, – just spend real quality time with different team members across the company. So it's open for any employee and they can bring a guest and we're down there twice a week and we just spend an hour sweating together. Yeah. Oh, that's great. A family that sweats together stays together. (laughs) I agree. (laughs) It's true. So you know that Radically Loved, uh, well, obviously the podcast, but so much of, of what I've created in, in my business and in my coaching and teaching uh, yoga and meditation, radically loved is this idea that we are all radically loved by God, universe, source, presence, a uh, higher power of your understanding, just whatever it is that, that you believe in is 100% fully supporting you. It's fully loving you. It's, it's, consistent, unwavering love, right? So that, that's what you are radically loved or radically loved is all about. So in what, like what we all want in the world, right? Yeah, At exactly. At the end of the day. Yes. Nothing matters more than that feeling. Right. And so for, for you, my question is, how do you feel radically loved and what do you radically love? Gosh, I, I probably never, I need to think more about what makes me feel radically loved. Mm-hmm. I loved because uh, I probably spend more time loving on others. Um, but yeah, I think what I radically love is like that moment when you're working with someone or 
teaching someone and coaching someone and they have that moment where the light bulb goes off and they, they start to believe they can. Mm. Like seeing that transition from like frustration and doubt to confidence and a state of empowerment, that for me is like there's no better feeling than seeing that happen for someone and getting to be a part of it is an even bigger blessing. Mm. So I love that. And I think for me, what makes me feel radically loved is lots of hugs, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure probably the same, probably the same, like um, what you were saying in terms of your, the definition of your brand, like full support, like unwavering support and unconditional love um, makes me feel radically loved. But I'm a very affectionate person, so I, I receive that love in hugs. Yeah. Okay, so for everyone listening, anytime you see Candace, <laughs> please go give her hug. So many hugs. But, Thank but you. tell her you tell her you heard it on the podcast or, or else she's gonna, you know, she's gonna think just some random person's coming up to her. Which I'm sure will be fine, I guess, depending on the context. Uh, where can where, <laughs> where can people find more information about you, what you do, and about nourish and bloom? Um, I think I am most active on Instagram, um, and it's just at Candace Hudspeth. Um, but you can find me on most of the social media platforms that are out there. Um, and nourishandbloom.com will be live uh, coming in January. Product available toward the end of January, early February. We haven't had an official date yet, um, but I'm very excited to share that with the world. And um, always uh, check for amazing news on bodybuilding.com too. Those two brands will be completely separate, but. I'll never not support uh, BBCom. Yes, awesome. Uh, <laughs> that is, you're amazing. And, and I do want to just take a moment to acknowledge you and to thank you for everything that you do for everyone else because you are constantly doing so much for so many people and for your team. And everything that you do and everything that you do for yourself, thank you for leading by example and for all of your dedication and hard work. And for being just a, a, a rad chick. Oh, you're the best, Rosie. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. For more information, visit www.radicallylove.com forward slash podcast to read all about today's guests or past guests. You can click on any of the links or for more information, you can always follow me on Instagram at Rosie Acosta or Twitter at Rosie Acosta and let us know what you thought.